Hello everybody, I'm YouTuber Evil Rabbit, and today we're going to be talking about the Mazda R9 wheelbase and get you guys wheel settings and force feedback settings so you guys can get sideways with your friends in a set of Corsa and tell you guys exactly why I have the settings the way I do. So we're going to get the wheel clicked on here and the first big thing we need to do is go into the Mazda Pit House app, the app that you download with the Mazda base where it shows your wheelbase and your steering wheel. We do have my RS steering wheel connected. We do not have the Mazda pedals connected, so that's not something we'll be talking about in this video. We're going to be talking about the force feedback settings. So for force feedback settings for drifting in a set of Corsa, the Pit House app and Mazda have come up with some very good base settings with clicking on drift it automatically goes 900 degrees force feedback setting is at 55 percent with some mechanical dampening and of course the wheel speed being able to spin as fast as it needs to without resistance these are things that you can adjust personally or based on the cars that you are running if you feel that you are getting the wheel spinning too fast or not fast enough you can remove mechanical dampening or you can add mechanical dampening if you want the wheel to feel a little bit more of a friction but the first and biggest thing that I will recommend for everybody is make sure your firmware is completely updated to the latest software for the wheel and the base. Uh, Mazda Racing coming out with a lot of updates to better the force feedback in games, more games and things like that. So always make sure that you have your base and your wheel fully updated and it's just as simple as clicking version checking and as you can see mine are already at the latest if you were to click version checking you can do all the upgrades on one click the pit house app making that very easy for you to update everything on one click of a button so it's very user friendly so make sure your firmware is all the way updated before you get into the game the one big thing that i did notice when i was getting my r9 set up what we do need to go is if you guys are using content manager um which most people that are running drift mods and everything are using content manager. I believe it is the easiest interface from a set of Corsa to have the mods and everything like that. So getting the base connected is very simple by clicking it and just turning it and making the base connect to the game. Now, of course, I have other parameters with my Fanatec pedals and my handbrake and things like that. But to get the wheel connected to a set of Corsa, it's as simple as clicking that button. So for force feedback settings, these are the feedback settings that I find very smooth feeling and not aggressive and things that I enjoy drifting in. And they're very good on the basic cars that everybody is using with the World of Drift Tours cars, my car pack and things like that. These are the settings that I find are very good and will make the experience of drifting so much more fun. So we're running gain at 70%. Now I run it at 70% just because you can adjust it on the wheelbase as well. So if you feel that your the car doesn't have enough feedback, you can adjust the gain up a little bit here, or you can adjust it up in the pit house app because you have the ability to go up with them only running it at 55% off the rip. The game has incredible feedback and the wheel rotates just fast enough. But if you want that little extra more, it's as simple as just sliding this up, sliding it one way or another. But like I said, clicking on drift immediately gives you all these settings that I'm talking about. So inertia, everything like that, force feedback equalizers are things you can mess with. But this is the easiest way to get in to a set of course of drifting with the car packs that you will see that are mostly used on all the public servers that are very busy and i would definitely recommend starting on these settings if you're just starting out drifting in a set of course of with the r9 wheelbase so everything else i have turned off if you notice i have forced the filter turned off minimum force feedback curb effect road slip abs all of that is turned off to zero when you first get in the game the defaults will actually be all over the place i find turning them all off is more feedback from the wheelbase and the wheel itself rather than artificial feedback from in game now when you have those on with vibration and stuff like that it kind of gives an artificial feedback and it kind of counteracts the feedback that comes from the wheel so personally i prefer to have all the feedback coming out of the wheelbase and not some artificial feedback out of the game now like i said these are things that if you want to mess with you can but these are just the basic settings that i found that will make it so much easier to get in and to 
just have fun bashing with your friends, drifting, and just having a great time on the car packs. So as for, like I said, the car packs, so that is only the force feedback you will need in-game as well as their basic drift setting in the Pit House app. This will get you on track right away. Very easy to do it. So for cars, we are talking about the World Drift Tour Street Cars. These are all cars you can find on Vossen.co. Um, the Vossen website are all over the forums or any Discord channel you're part of. But we're going to get into the game with this, and I'm going to show you guys exactly why I recommend these settings for anybody new into drifting into a set of Corsa. So let's get into the game, and we will show you what I'm actually talking about. So we are at Lime Rock Park in World Drift Tours S14 on those basic settings that I had talked about. And this is why I recommend these settings for all new drifters, because if you notice right away, clutch kicking in, the car response on these cars is extremely nice. The wheel is very stable and it's extremely good in rotation without a handbrake. So you can see, I just kind of let the car float, let the weight of the car transition and the wheel does what it needs to and snaps right back just by letting go of the wheelbase so that's something that is extremely nice comparative to every other wheel that i've used because of the rotational speed is there with their inertia and everything like that that they have set up so if you don't have a handbrake you can just use clutch kicks like that and get the car sliding and have a good time so that's why these settings are extremely nice if you're just starting out in a set of courses drifting and these are the feedbacks that I personally use in for competition in esports drifting as well as my bash lobbies and all the car packs and everything that I've found now like I said before if you feel that you are not getting enough wheel feedback you can just bump up the force feedback in the Mazda pit app from 55 up to 660 or 70 and fine-tune that but these are if you just want to get into it, you just got the R9 and you want to get in and slide and bash around, these settings will get you definitely on track and having a ball. Ooh, as we try and change views up and get you in there and have a ball. So if you guys enjoy drifting and you guys do have the Mazda R9, this is a great starting point for you guys. And a big thank you to Mazda Racing for the amazing wheelbase that they have made. And the R9 definitely super fun and super responsive so make sure you guys follow all of the information that is in this video if you guys want to get on track and I appreciate you guys you know taking the time and letting me explain my wheel settings to you I'm Eagle Rabbit I'll see you guys on the track